all right everybody welcome back to the channel here and today we're going to talk about flywheel keys in particular we're going to talk about timing advance keys so this is your standard flywheel key that you would find in a honda cg motor or you know most other hondas um this is really this is applicable to anybody with a tbr7 a Hawk 250, a TT 250, uh, you maybe you have a go kart, a mini bike that has a Predator 212 or similar engine on it, and maybe you have you know a Honda, a KTM, most of all which use a flywheel key to set the timing on the flywheel. Now, this is a standard key that you would find if you pulled off your flywheel right now. When you have a timing advance key, well, I, I keep saying advance key, but I'm gonna correct that. So it's not always an advance key. A timing key that offers two degrees, four degrees, eight degrees, 12 degrees of timing change is going to have a notch in it where the bottom will be the entire width of the key but the top is going to be notched in let's say two degrees is here four degrees is here and six degrees and so on it'll be notched in further now typically we would install it as an advance but sometimes you would want to install it to retard the timing that depends on your setup what you're looking to do but like I said, today we just have a standard flywheel key, so it doesn't have the notch in it. And like I just said, you can imagine if it did have the notch, it would just be thinner at the top. I've never seen them pass, say, halfway, which is 12 degrees of timing change, whether it be advance or retard. So in this case, we're gonna talk about a Honda CG motor that you would find on you know, your typical China bike. Now, this motor rotates counterclockwise. So if you wanted it to be advanced, you would be setting the key. Move this tripod. You would set the key like so, and the notch would be on this side. So this would have the notch for the advance. If you wanted to, let's say, retard the timing, you would rotate the key around 180 degrees, and you would have your notch now on this side of the crank which again, essentially is going to retard the timing. Two degrees, four degrees, six degrees, you know, et cetera, et cetera, so on. So I was actually really surprised whenever I looked around YouTube and I didn't see any videos covering this. Readjust the tripod here. Because essentially this is a really, really cheap, easy and effective way to gain power out of your motor. You know, everybody's been doing this since the beginning of time. Automobiles came out. You would advance the timing to gain more power out of a motor that, say, just simply didn't have enough power for what you wanted to do. So I'm going to remove the key back off of the crank here just so I don't lose it because they are really, really small. So if you had just hold your stator cover off and obviously in this case again this is a honda cg engine that i'm using for demonstration your motor is going to be similar but different if it's not a honda cg so let me back this tripod up here for a second so this is your flywheel and if it was on the motor you would have your crank bolt in there. Um, I believe this crank, yeah, this crank bolt is a 14 millimeter. So you would crack the crank bolt, 
remove it, set it aside, and you would find that your flywheel is sitting on your motor like this. And also while I have it out here, this is a good way to show you whenever you're rotating the flywheel counterclockwise in order to get your motor set in time. Poof, it goes around. And you see this notch here, this notch here. You see your F, your line, then a small gap, and your T with a line. T is the one, the T line is the one you want to go off. And on your stator cover, whenever you pull the little cover off the top and look down in there, there's a window and there's a little notch in the top of the stator cover. That is what you want to align your T line with. While you're on your compression stroke, of course, you don't just rotate it over, see the T and you're in time. It could be 180 degrees backwards, et cetera, et cetera, which could turn out to be a nightmare. If you're adjusting your valves or something similar, you could end up with 180 degrees out of time. Um, I cover that in another video. If you never watched any of my videos on my channel, there is a valve adjustment video for the Honda CG engines. Um, if you are new to the channel, I really do appreciate anybody who subscribes, hits the like button, leaves me a comment. If you have any questions, I do respond. I do try my best to answer anybody and everybody's questions. No matter how small or how big that question may be, it does still matter. So I will get around to doing that. I try to answer everybody's questions as fast as possible and as correctly or as helpful as possible. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. We run a Facebook group called The Chonda Riders, as these are basically a Chinese Honda, so we call them a Chonda. That's where we get the name Chonda Riders from. Now, you can buy these flywheel keys with the notch in it to either advance or retard the timing from a few different locations, uh, one of which is Henner Racing. Uh, Henner Racing is ran by Joe Henner. Uh, Joe Henner does some really, really good work, especially with these Chinese bikes. Uh, I mean, he offers head porting, head decking. Um, there really isn't so, in so many words, there really isn't much he doesn't offer. Um, he's definitely an asset to the China bike world. Um, there is a few other places that if you know what you're looking for, you can buy the flywheel key from. You're not going to find it listed as a TBR7 key or a Hawk 250 TT250 key. You're going to find it listed under a Honda, I believe it's a CRF50 or a CRF100. I uh, will put the link down in the video's description as I always do with everything you see in my videos. So, on to this. Now, you put your motor in time, and you got your flywheel cover off. Oh, well, your stator cover off, exposing your flywheel. I'm sorry. Let me catch back up here. So, you got your 14 millimeter bolt out. Take your flywheel puller, screw it in there. Zip. Get your flywheel off on the back side. You have your starter gear, part of the reduction setup. Now, this comes out. If you go to pull your flywheel off and this happens to stay on the crank, it's not a big deal. It's nothing to freak out about. It just simply snaps back into place here. There you go. And you can see again, this is why we rotate the motors counterclockwise. You see it'll spin this way, but it will not spin clockwise. Counter, can't go clockwise. 
That's why I'm stressing now, and I do stress in the valve adjustment video. You always want to spin the motor counterclockwise. I honestly don't even know if you can force it to spin clockwise, but if you can, don't do it. Just don't. It's not the way to do it. I've never done it, so I don't exactly know what you're going to run into as far as a problem if you force it to go clockwise. But that's another video for another day. Maybe we'll cover that as to what could happen if you do happen to force it to go clockwise. So anyhow here, once you have that off, flywheel's off, as you can see, and occasionally when you pull these off, you may find that your flywheel key is stuck to the flywheel itself and there's a little groove inside of here that's from the back side this will be easier to see from the front though so at the front of your flywheel this little groove right here this is what the flywheel key Once you slip it over the crank, that's what your flywheel key does. That's how it aligns the flywheel. And that's how it depicts the timing. Whether it's stock or you have advanced or retarded timing, that is how it works. So don't be worried if you happen to pull this and you don't see a key sitting on your crank. You definitely want to do this in a place where it is clean on the ground or you have even some cardboard under the bike just in case you drop your flywheel key. Now you're putting a different flywheel key in. If you have the replacement here already, that's not such a big deal. But if you would happen to be pulling your flywheel because you need access in here to, let's say, your, let me grab this. Let's say you're changing your cam. So, just real crudely, slip this in here like so. Might as well cover this while we're in here. So if you were just changing the cam, once your flywheel was off, please keep track of this key. They're very easy to lose. Once the flywheel's off, best thing to do is take your key, set it to the side somewhere that you know whenever you come back, the key's gonna be there. You'll find a bolt right here holding a cover on. Behind the cover, resting in here, is a spring when you pull that cover and bolt off, again, you want to be very, very careful that you do not lose that spring. You remove the shaft. And from there, you can pull out your cam and your cam gear. Now, the reason this motor's out is because this cam gear is destroyed, as is the crank gear. Let's see if we can finagle this tripod in here. Might be able to see it, might not be able to see it. But the cam gear and the crank gear both have some imperfections that we're not gonna put this motor back together this way. So I'm gonna have to split the case, pull the crank, get the uh, crank gear off and press on a new crank gear. That way this motor can go back together and be a backup motor ready to go since i have a new motor that i'm building that i'm going to drop a cg 300 cylinder on which will be another video i'm going to show you guys how to use the cg 300 cylinder to essentially take your honda cg 250 as it's referred to but it's actually a 229 cc the cg 300 jug taking you from a 67 millimeter piston to a 70 millimeter piston 
is going to actually turn this engine here into a true 250 cc engine which will be a very nice increase in power backed up with a uh, custom cam having the flywheel advanced four degrees and having a ported head on here from henner racing as you'll be able to see in one of my past videos here that i made recently uh, this motor was making a great amount of power before one of my valve spring retainers decided that it was going to throw itself down the push rod galley down into the bottom end and get chewed up by the cam and crank gear inadvertently chewing up the cam and crank gear happy times can't cry over spilled milk it happens so if you're advancing your timing like I said, you're gonna put your key back on and your, well, let me put it in place here correctly. So there's no mix up on how the key goes. Your key will have the notch on the left side. If you were retarding the timing, the notch would be on the right side. After that, you would just put your flywheel back on Get it on as far as you can. The way your bolt has enough to catch. You do not want to catch this on one thread or two threads. You want to tap this flywheel on as far as you can. So you can have it in, let's say, a quarter of the way at least. Now you can tell the crank bolt goes into right about here so you like i said you don't want to have one two three threads catch and then try to run this in with an impact you are simply just going to rip the threads right out of your crank and you're in for a very very bad day because then you got to hope you can get the crank bolt to go in far enough to overcome the few threads that you ripped out or you're splitting a case and you're replacing the crank. Not a fun time. Again, like I said, I just, um, I was actually pretty surprised with all of the, you know, the China bikes that are on the market and, you know, other similar setups, you know, the Predator 212 go-karts, mini bikes. There's so many different motors out here currently that are very popular that can benefit a lot from just simply pulling your flywheel and changing your key. Uh, your average cost of your flywheel key is 15 to 25 bucks, depending on what motor you have and what degree of timing the key is going to change. Um, trying to make this video as short as possible, but as detailed as possible, so if I left anything out, if you have any questions, again, please feel free to comment. I will answer your question in a timely manner. And again, I really do appreciate if you like and subscribe as it helps my channel grow, which allows my videos to be seen by other people who may not be a member of one of these bike groups. And that way these videos can be seen by others and potentially help them. So thank you for watching. I hope this helps. Since I haven't seen anybody else really address the timing key, I don't want anybody to think they're advancing the timing when they're actually retarding the timing or vice versa. They want to retard it and they accidentally advance it. Now you got to pull the motor back apart again. So again, thank you for watching. And uh, I do look forward to you subscribing and watching future content as I'm always trying to stay ahead of the curve and make sure that I'm giving somebody quality content to either keep their bike running or make their bike run better. So, hope this helps. Thank you and have a good day.